Hey guys, welcome back to another session of food therapy. In today's video, I'm going to show you all how to take all of those delicious homemade Thanksgiving leftovers and put them all together and make a masterpiece. I'm going to show you all how to make a pot pie. I've made a pot pie before, a chicken pot pie, and I believe a seafood pot pie. But this pot pie is one of the most inexpensive pot pies I've ever made. Why? Well, because everything that's in it, we already have. It's either leftover or it's really something you should really already have in your pantry, the flour, uh, milk, you know, things like that. Again, this is a really easy recipe, really inexpensive, and it's probably going to be one of the best pot pies you've ever made in your life, if you have ever made one. Step one in making the delicious pot pie is the crust. The crust has to be on point no matter what. If you have a bad crust, it's not going to turn out okay. We're going to use all-purpose flour, unsalted butter, ice water, and salt. For this recipe, I'm going to make my own crust, but if you guys prefer, you can go to your local grocery store and in their freezer section, you can purchase an actual pot pie crust or even using the refrigerated pie crust. That's perfectly fine. Just make sure the crust is on point when you finish. That's all that matters. To make my pie crust, I'm going to use a four and a half quart stand mixer. Any stand mixer you have is fine. You can also use a large bowl using a hand mixer. I'm going to get my mixer to the first setting because this is going to get a little bit messy. There's no way to avoid it, so just prepare for it. You're going to basically go ahead and toss in your flour, your butter, your salt. I'm then going to add seven tablespoons of water. Once you have all of your water added, crank the speed up just a notch on your stand mixer or your hand mixer and let this run for about a minute to a minute and a half. At the end, it's going to have the texture of pea-sized breadcrumbs. Before we take our dough and dump it on the counter, you want to make sure you dust your counter or your cutting board really well with flour. You do not want to have this crust sticking to your counter nor your rolling pin. Once you have your working space fully dusted, take your mixture and dump it onto the counter right onto the flour. As you can see, our pie crust has the texture of large size or pea-sized breadcrumbs. Take your hands and put some flour in them as well and grab your dough and just kind of put it into a ball. It's going to fall apart over and over again, so don't be concerned about that. That's perfectly fine. Just grab as much as the crust as you can and put it into a ball. What's going to happen, we're going to take our crust and put it in our refrigerator for two to eight hours. That way it gets together, it forms its shape, and then it's going to make it much easier for us to roll out. Once you have a nice size ball form with your pie crust, you're going to grab either some plastic wrap or a Ziploc bag and put your crust into the bag or the wrap. Again, we're going to place our dough into the fridge for a minimum of two hours, but at the most eight hours. This part of the recipe is totally optional. You don't have to refrigerate it, but I find that if you do, it works well when rolling it out to put it into your pie pan. Once you let your pie crust chill in your fridge, you want to take it out and pat some more flour on your counter, your hands, and your cutting board. Take your pie crust and divide it into two balls. We're going to need two balls because we're going to have to make a bottom crust and the top crust for our pie pan. When rolling out your pie crust using a rolling pin, always make sure you start from the center and go out. You may have to rotate it a few times, but that's okay. Remember, center, out, center, out. As far as the thickness, it doesn't matter. Just make sure this pie crust is wide enough to cover the bottom and the sides going up of our nine inch pie pan. Take your roll pie crust and add it gently to your nine inch deep dish pie pan. You're gonna make sure again the crust is covering the bottom and the side is going up of our pie dish. All right, so good job on the pie crust, guys. Now it's time to conquer the filling. As you can see, like I told you before, every single ingredient is something I had left over from Thanksgiving dinner. I have sweet potatoes, milk, turkey and ham, lemon, flour, chicken broth, garlic cloves, butter, shallots, carrots, white onion, and green bell pepper. As far as the size, I cut mine into half an inch pieces, but you can definitely go bigger. Just make sure you have enough room for everything to fit into your pie crust. In addition, we'll also need fresh parsley, fresh rosemary, and fresh sage leaves. Before you begin, take your sweet potatoes and bring them to a boil. Let them cook for about five minutes. You don't want to cook them too much, but you want to get them soft enough to get a little bit of a head start while cooking in your pot pie in the oven. 
Now it's time to cook your veggies. You want to grab a nice sized Dutch oven, coat the bottom of the pan with olive oil, and then toss your vegetables in. You want to add your red onion, white onion, carrots, green bell pepper, garlic cloves. Once you have your vegetables added to your pan, cook them for about five to 10 minutes. You don't want to have them too mushy. I personally like a little bit of a bite when I eat my pot pie. So, you know, that's my preference. If you do want them softer, then by all means, go ahead and make them softer. You want to sprinkle in a little bit of salt and a little bit of fresh ground black pepper. The salt is going to help bring up the juices in the vegetables. So that way they won't brown, but they are mostly just take their time and cook slowly. So we're going to make sure we season as we go. After your vegetables have been cooking for about 10 minutes, you want to add in some butter and some flour. Now this is going to help create the gravy or the thickening sauce for our filling for our pot pie. You want to cook this for about another five minutes or so. This is the part where we want to make sure the flour and the butter are fully incorporated because you want to make sure you actually cook the flour. You don't want to have the dry powdery taste in your creamy sauce for your pot pie. After cooking your flour and vegetable mixture for about five minutes, you want to then add in your chicken stock and then your milk. And now we're going to start to create that sauce we're going to use for our filling for our pot pie. At this point while making your sauce, you want to grab either a whisk or a wooden spoon to stir your sauce. You want to make sure you keep stirring because as it's cooked, it's going to thicken pretty rapidly. So you want to make sure you don't catch any lumps because you don't want to have any lumps in your smooth, creamy, buttery pot pie filling. You're going to now add some salt and some fresh ground pepper. I'm also going to add a dash of crushed red pepper flakes just for a little kick. Now go ahead and add your juice of half a lemon. As you can see, I don't have good aim, so just try to get as much of it in a pan as you can. Um, and also, don't get in your eye. It will burn very bad. Just a warning. Dip your spoon in the sauce and run your finger down the back of the spoon. If the line doesn't cover up, you're good to go. If it does, you may want to cook it a little bit longer. If not, maybe add a touch more flour. Now it's time for the protein. Tossing your turkey, your ham, and don't forget about your parsley, your sage, and your fresh rosemary. Once your sauce is cooked for about five to 10 minutes, toss in your boiled sweet potatoes. Give it a light, quick stir. You don't wanna break the potatoes up. You wanna make sure everything stays whole. And that's it. Now it's time to put the filling into our deep dish pie pan. Before I add my filling to my pie crust, I wanna take a fork and just poke a few holes in the bottom of the crust. This is going to prevent bubbling at the bottom so the steam can escape and just make sure everything is cooked evenly and pretty in the oven. Just to be safe, what you can do is grab a ladle and just scoop your pie filling into your crust. Now, you will see that this recipe is just enough for this pan, so you can really dump it all in a pot or you can just take your time and be safe like me and just scoop it in a little bit at a time. Either way is fine. After you've added all of your pie filling to your pie pan, Take the top crust, lay it gently over the top of your pie pan. Again, your top pie crust should cover the entire top and a little bit going down the size of your pie dish. You wanna then grab both edges if you can or as best as you can, and just kind of roll and tuck them under. That way as our pie crust bakes, it's gonna give a kind of a pretty presentation in the end. Right before you put your pie in the oven, you wanna take one egg, add maybe a tablespoon of water and then beat it. You want to then take a brush and then brush it lightly over the top of the pie crust. This is going to give our crust that nice, beautiful, shiny, crusty look as it cooks in the oven. Once you have your crust fully covered in the egg mixture, add it to a 375 degree oven and this is going to cook for exactly 45 minutes. Just to be safe, you may want to line the bottom of your oven with some aluminum foil or you can place a baking dish or a baking pan under this pan because it may run over just a tiny bit. I'm also gonna put a few slits in the top of my pie crust. This is gonna prevent it from bubbling up really bad. It's also, again, gonna make it look pretty, nice and homemade as it's cooking. All right, guys, so there you have it. The most inexpensive pot pie you will ever make in your life. Why? Because everything in this pot pie we had from last week's dinner. This is a really easy recipe. Um, it's just so fragrant with all the herbs and the vegetables and the crust is buttery and flaky and the filling is smooth and creamy and buttery and just oozing and just going to make you feel so good while eating it. 
This is a really good meal for a nice cold day. So just just go at it. I want to thank you all so much for watching Food Therapy with Brandon. If you all have any recipes you want me to test out or challenge me with, I'm up for it. Let me know in my comments. All right, please help me out by liking my videos and also subscribing to my channel. And keep those notifications turned on. I want you guys to be the first to know when I have a new video posted. I'll be posting weekly, probably every other day for right now because I want to make sure I give you guys the best that I can give. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until next time.